Hi, I'm Kristen Knoll, a librarian here at Massanutten Regional Library. Today I want to share with you some books that involve food and romance. Some of them will emphasize the cooking more, some of them will emphasize the romance more, but they will all probably leave you very hungry. Our first book is Act Your Age, Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert. This is the third book in this series about sisters falling in love, but they can all be read as standalone novels. This series stands out in the romance genre because of the great characters. They're well written, they're diverse, it's just wonderful. Um, in this book, purple-haired, optimistic, chaotic Eve Brown ends up working the kitchen at a B&B &B owned by the autistic Jacob Wayne, who's a bit of a control freak with a frosty personality. Clearly, you can expect a good old-fashioned opposites attract love story, but you also get a more modern tale with witty banter, positive take on neurodivergence, and some pretty steamy scenes. Next up is The City Baker's Guide to Country Living by Louise Miller. Pastry chef Olivia Rawlings accidentally sets the fancy Boston club where she works on fire. So she escapes to her friend's house in rural Vermont and ends up working at the Sugar Maple Inn, whose cantankerous owner wants to reclaim the blue ribbon in the county fair apple pie contest. While Olivia does develop tender feelings for a local man, the emphasis of this book is more on bigger themes of belonging, grief, family, and small town living. Miller's descriptive writing will leave your mouth watering for pastries. Now, you've probably heard myself or Susan talk about Sonali Dev before. We can't get enough of her mouthwatering books about the Raj family that are inspired by the novels of Jane Austen. This book, inspired by Persuasion, follows chef Ashna Raj as she joins the cast of reality show Cooking with the Stars as part of an attempt to save her restaurant. Unfortunately, she's paired on the show with her first love, soccer star Rico Silva. Their first meeting goes viral and social media is obsessed with them, which further complicates their complex feelings for each other. I don't read too many romances, but I always read Sonali Deb's new books because of her descriptive writing and multi-layered plots. The romance doesn't happen in a vacuum, but in a realistic world with families, friends, careers. She also balances the humor and the steaminess, not to mention insanely tempting food descriptions. I highly recommend all of her books in this series. And side note, if you enjoy reality TV and romance, you should try the new book One to Watch by Kate Stamen London. So this next book is bit different, but it employs one of my favorite techniques, a parallel narrative. The Confectioner's Tale by Laura Madeline takes place in Paris in both the early 1900s and the 1980s. In the 1980s, Petra is researching her grandfather's life when she finds a picture of him with two unnamed people. Curiosity piqued, she begins researching the Patisserie Clermont during the Belle Epoque, specifically Guillaume Dufrère, a pastry apprentice, and Mademoiselle Jean Clermont, who oversaw the shop for her wealthy father. Though it employs the interclass romance trope, this novel is more romantic than romance. It is bittersweet and atmospheric and really draws the reader in. I still have image, vivid images of the chocolate making process described in this book permanently in my imagination, even though it's been years since I've read it. The author is a baker, so that makes a lot of sense. Okay, so Sarah Addison Allen is one of my favorite authors. Most of her books, books involve the lives of everyday Southern women with a little bit of magic and often some tasty bites tossed in. In this one, The Girl Who Chased the Moon, 17-year-old Emily moves in with her grandfather in Mullaby, North Carolina after her mother's death. She wants to learn more about her mother's past, but a lot of the townspeople hold her mom's past against her. The local restaurant owner, Julia, who's a contemporary of Emily's mother, kind of takes her in and puts her on, takes her under her wing um, but she also has struggles of her own because she's searching for a daughter she put up for adoption a long time ago. As they both um, uncover the family and town secrets, and they kind of develop some romances, they learn that the past can be forgiven and it's never too late to change the future. This is a whimsical, heartwarming book where the wallpaper changes color depending on the person's mood and hope comes baked in the form of cakes. I'm really not doing it justice, but suffice it to say that reading one of Alan's books is like wrapping yourself in a warm, fuzzy blanket. So. Definitely check this one out too. Okay, now I've saved A Taste of Sage by Santos for last. As you can see, this is not a physical book. I just printed a copy of the cover. This title is only available at MRL through our ebook. I wanted to highlight it specifically because I wanted to make sure that romance readers know we have quite a selection of romance available through Overdrive, um, from historic to modern, from chaste to steamy, and with quite a diverse range of characters, including you know different races, different sexualities. So definitely check out Overdrive for more romance ebooks. Now, A Taste of Sage is about Lumi Santana, born with a unique form of, form of synesthesia. She can perceive a person's emotions just by tasting their cooking. 
After her Dominican cuisine fusion restaurant fails, she has to take a job as a sous chef at a traditional French restaurant. And needless to say, the Sharp Town owner is just very different from her and has a very different style and they don't get along at all. So she loves food and Julian, the restaurant owner, makes dish after tempting, tempting dish until she finally gives in and tries some of his food. And of course, that's when things begin to change between them. Um, one of the best parts I think about this book is that the chapters alternate between Lumi's point of view and Julian's point of view, so the reader can see both sides of this enemies to lovers romance. Okay, so that's all for today. If these six books weren't enough to satisfy your hunger for romance and food, uh, you can stop into any branch and ask for a copy of our Food and Romance book list. It has at least 30 more titles on it, um, so you can just get your fix of yummy romances. Um, that's it for today, and until next time, happy reading!